I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the week of September 19th to September 25th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. Hello! Welcome back to the Glue Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Just three bodies with vaginas here. Just three bodies with vaginas hanging out in an undisclosed location. <laughs> we are very excited to be sponsored by Locals.com. Locals is where Fetacy.com is hosted. It's our little online oasis. Locals is for independent creators like myself and others. And you can publish your content there. You can get subscribers there. You can engage with your supporters Our community has one rule, which is don't be a dick. And everybody responds pretty well to that, I think. And it's a magical place. Locals gives you so much empowerment as an independent creator. It allows me to really function as my own business. And if you're an independent and a creative and you want to start out your own business and you want to start sharing your art with the world, Locals.com is the place for you to do that. Gaff in chief. It was a busy week for the gaff in chief. Biden's approval rating hits new low of 43%. Harris is at, is at 49%. Biden, his approval rating is at an all-time low, and his thoughts per minute are at an all-time low. (laughs) Because he's clearly deteriorating. Harris, she's unlikable. (laughs) What more can I say? (laughs) That's all I have to say about that. (laughs) She's proof you can fail up, even as a woman and a woman of color. It's not just white men failing up. Yeah, I guess she's the most unlikable VP, like, ever. It's just so shocking to me how she can be so bad and still manage to be successful. Mm. She really is proof that not only white men fail up because she said some crazy stuff. She was on The View, like they had to pull two people off The View because they had COVID. And then she did an interview where she... It was just so awkward. Her Uh. interview was just so awkward. Just the way she presents stuff. She was talking about the whole whips and rains and all that stuff and she was like and it brings up memories of our indigenous and she kind of started laughing and then she was laughing about it was like so awkward the human beings should not be treated that way and as we all know it also evoked images of some of the worst moments of our history the indigenous people of our country has been used against african americans during times of slavery i was like how are you so bad at this you are the worst politician and yet you're the vice president i don't understand yeah that's weird she's not a good interviewee No, she's not at all. She's terrible. And she's, and here she is, just at the top of the pyramid. I don't understand it. And there, and then Biden was talking about how they were going to punish the DHS people who were on the horses for the whips. Promise you, those people will pay. They will be an investigation underway now, and there will be consequences. It's like, you guys, this border crisis, why don't you take responsibility for the border crisis that nobody acknowledged until there was that picture of someone being whipped, and it wasn't even, the photographer himself said that it wasn't, any. no one was getting whipped. Yeah. The, the Haitian men started running, running, trying to go around the horses. I didn't ever see him whip anybody with the thing he was swinging it but i didn't see him actually take you know whip someone with it you know so those those, that's something they can easily misconstrued it's just an image in time it looked very suspicious obviously but then now the videos all come out and still this is kind of moving into our next category i guess just (laughs) read it as is i think that's a great time okay great headline journalism this is what sam wrote this is what we are journalists (laughs) Migrants, whips, get mo horses to go to the glue farm. <laughs> Makes sense. I know what we're talking about. I only have going to the glue factory, whips, reins. <laughs> we did a great. That's it. That's all we need to talk. That's all we covered. I think covered. we covered this. And now they're at Guantanamo Tel Six. I know. They're, <laughs> oh. they're taking them to Guantanamo. Instead of waterboarding them with a wet towel, they just give them a nice hot towelette when they get there. <laughs> Although I don't think they were doing that. I think they threw all their crap on the ground and then they were making them pick it up. And it was like an unmarked bat. It was just really it's, demoralizing. It's really horrible what's going on. I just, it's it's just horrible. And then there are people who've spent years trying to get to the border 
Did and they all come at once? It's so weird because remember how every we always joke about the migrant caravans and how they like pop in and out of, of the simulation as they seem to be like needed whether we're approaching. It seems like they all like popped back in to existence at the same time and suddenly they were like, hey, we're, we're all at the border. <laughs> oh, okay, we're crossing the border now. And there were like 30,000 of them. I know, it's horrible. It's and like they were Soros. all living in like... Yeah, Soros, Soros and then chartered just a boat being... for the Haitians. <laughs> Soros chartered a yacht from Haiti. <laughs> and then they're being just flown back to Haiti and dropped off there. Like, how horrible would that be? <sighs> Take me to the glue factory. <laughs> I know, it's horrible. And they're fleeing horrible conditions. I know. All right, now that we covered the serious stuff, <laughs> let's move on. Okay, hypocrisy on fire. This is a it's new a category. It's a new category. Hypocrisy on fire. <laughs> Andy, do what you can with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. San Francisco mayor London Breed violates her indoor mask mandate to party with BLM co-founder at nightclub. Because it was Tony, 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 the original <laughs> band members, guys. Don't you understand? I can't believe this is getting lost in this non-story that I was out without a mask partying when I have a mandate to wear a mask indoors. What is the big deal? This is the famous saxophone player or whatever. Is she Tony, Tony, Tony's freaking tour manager? There was something that was monumental that occurred. Tony, Tony, Tony. The original members, the brothers, Raphael Sadiq. We don't need the fun police to come in and try and micromanage and tell us what we should or shouldn't be doing. Her answer is such a lesson in like particularly, I think, Democratic Politics 101, which is never f***ing cave to the mob and apologize. Mm. They're like, hey, this is a thing because you have a mandate and the rules for thee but not me is a little bit obnoxious coming from literally all the leaders. What is going on up there, San Francisco? She was like, I can't believe this is even a story. Let's. I think it's a, an, a crime that the real art in this city is being overshadowed by the fact that I wasn't wearing a mask, me. It's Tony, Tony, Tony. She was feeling the spirit. Ugh. This is the most attention Tony, Tony, Tony's got since I was finger banged in my freaking parents' basement <laughs> in the 90s. The 90s were a magical time. You were listening to Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> I was just feeling the spirit, Maggie. I was just feeling the spirit. I was feeling the spirit. And I wasn't thinking about a mask. Which uh -huh. is what she kept saying. She's like, I was just feeling the spirit. I'm going to use that for every excuse from now on. Like, do you know how fast you were going, miss? I was just feeling the spirit. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony was on the radio. Tony, Tony, Tony was on the radio. I feel like that's being overshadowed, officer. <laughs> Seth Rogen calls out the Emmys for being indoors, unmasked, and crowded. But the L.A. County Department of Health said the award show was exempt from COVID-19 protocols. First First of all, Seth Rogen admitted in his little speech that he wiped down his groceries. <laughs> I went from wiping my groceries to having Paul Bettany sneeze in my face. <laughs> Nerd. Loser. I did that the first month of the pandy. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't surprise me. I'm sure he has some masked worker wiping his groceries down still. The real class divide, as we've mentioned, is the plebs wear masks and the famous people don't. Uh -huh. And the mayors of San Francisco, apparently. That's the class divide. Well, the reasoning is the Emmys is considered a television production, so the people attending were all like stars of the production. Yeah, but even even in that system, it's still a hierarchy. Like the talent doesn't need to wear masks, but all of the staff, craft services, the cinematographers, like all of the crew has to wear masks. No, I think it's ridiculous. It's insane. Completely bullshit. In London Breed's thing, she says, like, well, we were, we're all vaccinated, so uh, there's less of a... Well, th why the... F do you need masks? You're just undermining your own point. And the same thing here with the L.A. County. Why the f*** are we wearing masks? If you're saying, well, most everybody's vaccinated and so it's fine because these people are vaccinated, well, then why are we wearing masks? Right. It's, a, it's an elitism. Hypocrisy. Uh, Take me to the glue factory. 
Then we have Aurora James, hey. des- designer of AOC's Met dress, turns out to be a tax deadbeat. Oh, big shocker. All these people are such hypocrites. She owes six figures in back taxes or some crazy crap and also took a PPP loan and also has like a bunch of interns in a sweatshop that she treats like crap, allegedly. And doesn't pay. And doesn't pay. Yeah, these are people who are like, pay your taxes. Freaking AOC's dress should have been like tax my friend arrows pointing tax Tax the friend (laughs) they're all so enormously full of shit yeah everyone's full of shit everyone take me to the glue factory (laughs) take me to the glue factory factory. (laughs) it's just so unfair to people all of these kids are wearing masks if you don't have the power and the clout like these people have you just have to play along with all these completely unscientific rules. You look at what they're how they're handling it in Europe. Like all of the Nordic countries have gotten rid of vaccine passports. Most of the restrictions, they're pretty much open. Kids have been going maskless to school for ages. Mm. And we don't handle it that way in the United States because we're f- slaves to unions. I hate the unions. <laughs> Proof we're living in a simulation. Maggie and I are starting a union. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's right. Sam and I have collective bargaining power. Speaking of unpaid, it's like you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. You're both fired. Get out. We have enough signatures. A majority like, of the fantasy signatures. You guys are like, oh, really? Unpaid interns, huh? <laughs> Sweating in a garage. Look who's now wearing a mask in front of the camera. You What's like that like, Karen? Get behind camera. You're in charge. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Sheath Underwear and Squid Print. Sheath Underwear was created by an Iraq war veteran to help keep his parts dry in the desert. It has an amazing dual pouch system for the family jewels where it keeps them separate from all of the rest of the genitalia and your legs so you can go mow the lawn and listen to a podcast, preferably walk-ins welcome, and you can just run around in your boxer briefs and your nuts aren't smashing either side of your leg and you won't have to think about your balls and it's a miracle. And they also have women's sets of underwear. They have them in um, little boxer briefs and booty shorts. They have sports bras, which I love and wear every single day. And all around great gift for the holidays, which are coming. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use the code dumpster to get 20% off your entire order. This is a great product. They support independent speakers like us. So support the people who support us. The link is in the description below. Squidprint is a mom and pop business in the creative industries. They do custom apparel for personal businesses, small brands, and just for fun. It specializes in direct-to-garment printing. This method is ideal for complicated, colorful designs. What's great is there's no order minimum. You can order just one shirt if you have an idea for a shirt and a design. They can also help you with their design. There are a whole in-house graphics team. From beginning to end, they can work with you. While their bread and butter is apparel printing, they can also do stickers, posters, they do embroidery and heat transfer application. Even your own custom cut and sew, they can do. I love this company. I love the woman behind this company is just a badass. And you can get more info at squidprintdtg.com. Reach out to them with their apparel idea and mention your favorite moment from this dumpster fire and you will get free shipping and 20% off your first custom order. Just an extra perk, Phetasy.com members get 20% off all the time. Get out there and use Squidprint, DTG.com. The link is in the description below. All right. Proof we're living in a simulation. (laughs) CERN anticipates the first test beams will circulate in the Large Hadron Collider at the end of September 2021. Oh, great. We're resetting the timeline. (laughs) Wouldn't it be f***ed up if we went back to 2015 and we all woke up and it was like 2015 and Trump and Hillary were running again and then Hillary won and we had to live through that nonsense (laughs) and we never get out of this loop? And we were all like, I had the weirdest dream that Trump became president. <laughs> if I had a dream, we would 
film a little YouTube show and yeah. then disclose the location. And then we start dumpster fire again and none of our dumpster fires exist. And it seems like they're resetting the simulation just in time for Trump to run again. Oh, boy. Great. Take me to the glue factory. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have the Pentagon inches towards letting AI control weapons. It's called Skynet, people. Have we seen it? <laughs> Has no one at the Pentagon seen any of the Terminator films? I'm starting to think people should spend more time watching movies, particularly from the 90s. Uh huh. I suppose we do need to give work to those poor out-of-work drones now that we're out of Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Studies have shown that the PTSD treatment is much cheaper for the drones. You just ha need a little WD-40. Fix them right up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take humans out of the equation of whether or not to kill humans. This is obviously a very logical decision. Uh -huh. This is how we get rid of the backlog in the VA. And obviously we should be letting robots make decisions about whether we live or die because they're not clouded by all of those things like ethics. They just make it all based on reason, like you are more expendable than that other person. Mm. And clearly there's nothing that could go wrong with this. <laughs> all right. And then we have Get Rack China. Get Rack China! <laughs> Giant moon escapes from China's moon festival. <laughs> I just love this story. <laughs> the moon is like, no! Nah! Just a video of them chasing it down the street. <laughs> Maybe it escaped because it was too effeminate. <laughs> Had to get out. Yeah. The moon is the very female symbol. Uh -huh. it, they were like, it needed to get out or it was going to be banished. Yep. Moon starts doing push-ups. The moon was going to be disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Going to blow it up like they did in Spaceballs. Oh, what movie was it that I was just watching where they blew up the moon? Oblivion? Yes. Such a good movie. I love that movie. It's been half a century since the scavengers destroyed our moon. But I, I decided that I would choose Tom Cruise over Harrison Ford if I had to choose one of the two's entire catalog to watch for the rest of my life. Yeah, he's got a great catalog. It was a hard choice. But I think Tom Cruise's movies are, that guy's just a true movie star. Yeah. <laughs> and he takes it seriously. His movies are just so great. No, it's so good. <laughs> Ed Edge of Tomorrow is one of my favorite like sci-fi movies ever. Uh, just... That's one where it gets, he gets Yeah, it's like, like Groundhog restarted, Day right? with aliens. Yeah. Tom Cruise, if you need a new wife, I'm sure one of these lovely ladies would be willing to step up to the plate. No, I don't think. No, no, no. Tom Cruise, personally, <laughs> no. That's one thing. You He's wanna, like a lunatic. Tom you don't Cruise, check out Scientology, movie star. Maggie? Yes, we know Sam does. <laughs> Sam's Sam's your girl, Tom. Sam gets a freaking Scientology mailing every day here. <laughs> They're coming for you, Sam. They really are. <laughs> Tom's coming it's getting for you. aggressive. I <laughs> think Tom found out about you. All right. Then we have my nemesis is at it again. Elon Musk and Grimes are now semi-separated after three years. The child's name foretold this prophecy. <laughs> you knew th sh that this was never going to work when they named that child an equation. I mean, it's just X, the letter X. Um, and then the A-E is like pronounced Ash. Uh-huh. <laughs> Little did we know that equation was for how long they would be together. Yes, yeah, so it was exactly <laughs> 3.2 months. <sighs> I guess Grimes got tired of his alien lashings. <laughs> his alien lashing sex sessions. <laughs> really got tired of Elon just drawing on her back. <laughs> but I like to pretend it's, he turns into an alien. And he's like, come over here, baby. <laughs> Can you do that with like a South African accent? No. <laughs> <laughs> so much for being the Empress of Mars, Grimes. There goes your big chance. She's probably going to be the first woman who's actually banned from Mars. <laughs> and with that, I would request that you, my dear followers and subscribers, touch my bells and buttons. Like, subscribe, and comment. Make sure you tell Maggie 
in the comments. Oh, I had one that I was thinking of earlier and then I didn't write it down. Favorite Tony, Tony, Tony song? Yes, your favorite Tony, Tony, Tony <laughs> song from the 90s. <laughs> Okay, never woke enough. New executive at Marvel Studios said studio could drop the men from X-Men over concerns that the title is not inclusive. So stunning. So brave. <laughs> this is how you claw your way to the top in this cutthroat industry. Maybe we can call it X-Bodies with Penises. <laughs> <laughs> and vaginas? No, just X-Bodies with Penises. Well, that still excludes women. We're erasing women anyway, Maggie. <laughs> Let's be real here. X bodies. Let's remove that penis too. X humanity. Take us to the glue factory. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why does it always have to be all about gender? I'm so over it. The freaking uh, what is the obsession with it? I don't understand the obsession. We know that X Men is not just men. Mm -hmm. The brand in my mind does. I don't hear that and go, oh, it's all men. This is an outrage and outdated. I'm like, oh, it's a collection of men and women and other weird creatures yeah i think of storm Halle Berry. not Halle Berry. they're gonna make storm. loki like <laughs> gender bending gender fluid yeah. gender fluid gender bending. good but luck loki you're not gonna be allowed in china anymore it's probably the only thing that keeps them from going all in on this shit, is china what the f i love china now <laughs> <laughs> i suddenly see the silver lining of china, <laughs> china. keeping hollywood in check <laughs> <laughs> the term Jedi is problematic for describing uh, programs that promote justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We could have done an entire episode just on this article. It was long. Oh we should have just read it and done a reaction video to it. It sounds like this author wants a little more Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> and it was five people. It wasn't one author. It was five authors on I know. this thing. Two five dudes. people on this byline. It was freaking ridiculous. Three bodies with vaginas and two dudes. Two men and three bodies with vaginas. This is an actual quote from this article. The Jedi are inappropriate mascots for social justice. Although they're ostensibly heroes within the Star Wars universe, the Jedi are inappropriate symbols for justice work. They are a religious order of intergalactic police monks <laughs> prone to white saviorism and toxically masculine approaches to conflict resolution, violent duels with phallic lightsabers, gaslighting by means of Jedi mind tricks, etc. If it was satire, it would be brilliant, and I'm mad that I can't write satire. And I have to, you would just have to write it so earnestly. But this feels like these five people just sat around, got stoned at some potluck in Santa Cruz, and they were like, you know what's problematic about um, the Jedi? And then just started brainstorming and wrote this article. And it was in the freaking Scientific American or whatever. Yeah. This is like a, a reputable, used to be reputable magazine. This is why no one wants to get the vaccine and trust science. Uh -huh. Because freaking <laughs> articles like this, you're undermining your message. And they just completely ignored Yoda. There was not one mention of Yoda in this entire article as far as I could see. No. And mm -hmm. he's like a small, green-skinned alien who's the most badass Jedi of all. Maggie, don't you know Yoda is the green face of white supremacy? <laughs> Gone too far, inclusion has. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's a Star Trek fan and I hate his guts. <laughs> All these people are just Star Trek fans. That's all this is. That's that's really what this is about. These are Trekkies, and I won't stand for it. We keep this one here to suss out Trekkie bitches like yourselves and tell them to get the hell off of our land. Get the hell off of our land! Get the hell out of here! What is happening? When asked about his relationship with Epstein, Bill Gates responded with, well, he's dead. I've said I regretted having those dinners, uh, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing new on that. Is there a lesson for you, for anyone else looking looking at this? Well, he's dead, so. This was nuts. I He was like, well, he's dead, so what? It was, I, I saw a short version of the clip and I'm like, this can't be real, I because it got cut off. Mm -hmm. And so I had to watch the full extended version and the full extended version is somehow even weirder than that short clip. <laughs> Because he gets so awkward the minute she starts asking him a question he's been asked before. Bill, you're a f 
freaking bazillionaire. You're one of the richest men on earth. How do you not have a canned answer for this question with which you've been a Attacked by multiple journalists, it offends me on like a PR level. Yeah, that mm-hmm. he doesn't, that somebody didn't pre-approve the questions that she could ask, and that the minute she asks a question that's out of those bounds, they're like, "Okay, we're done here. See ya." Ah, uh-huh. I don't understand. Or that he hasn't been prepped and coached with how to answer that question without looking like a tweaker, without looking like obviously somebody who's very guilty. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what's the lesson? And he's like, well, he's dead, so don't f- cross me. <laughs> That's I feel like the lesson. Clintons are innocent. I, yeah, no, that I, it was obviously not the Clintons who had him killed. I think at this point we know it was Bill Gates. <laughs> I love how offended you get, though, at at these like PR flubs where you're like, what are you doing? Because it's so basic Uh and you're rich. And this is what happens when you're surrounded by sycophants. And yes, men, at a certain point, you're so wealthy. You're only surrounded by sycophants. Yes, men and people who are kissing your ass and you think you're invincible. And in some respects, you are. And it doesn't really matter. Like he he can say whatever and it won't really matter. But Jesus Christ, like pay for some good PR or somebody to like train you to have an answer to this question that doesn't make you look like you hired somebody to kill Epstein. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the lesson I think I've learned is he's dead and we've purged all the servers. Next question. (laughs) (laughs) Then we have CNN's Chris Cuomo admits inappropriately touching former top ABC News producer 16 years ago. What? I was feeling the spirit. (laughs) (laughs) Tony, Tony, Tony was playing. Tony, Tony, Tony was playing. You wouldn't squeeze her buttocks? So Italian. I'm Italian. Why? I was feeling the spirit. It was the 90s. You don't grab a woman's ass when you hug her? What? Right in front of her husband. And even in his apology... He was more apologetic that he did it in front of her husband and felt bad for him having to witness it than any the fact that he like assaulted her. That's so f-ing Italian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The machismo. How did he survive covering for his brother killing all those olds? How is he even working? I don't know. It's just you would be crushed in any other circumstances and any other job if you were this bad. Mm-hmm. But Jeffrey Tubin, he has his job. Lube in the tubin. Lube and tubin and Lube pervert in the tubin. little Frito. Cuomo. Fredo. The Fredo, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we f- said that guy was a scumbag. We've been saying it for like a year, over a year. Yeah, when he emerged from his little isolation. No one ever listens to little old dumpster fire when he had his meltdown, when somebody called him Fredo and said that it was like the slur word for being for Italians. Ugh. And compared it to the N word. Fredo is from the Godfather. He was a weak brother. It's an insult to your f- people. It's like the N word for us. Ugh. This guy's just a creeper. Yeah. They're both creepers. You can see, th- how can people not see this? Take me to the glue factory. Mm hmm. All right, leading us to Conspiracy Corner with Sammy Flaps and Folds, aka Infolds Wars. <laughs> <laughs> That was a brilliant comment in YouTube. Thank yes, you. Yes, YouTube. Thank you. And Sam had 14 different <laughs> items on the list for this week, but we had to force her to pick her favorite, too. It's not my fault all the conspiracies came true this week. Sam just needs her own show. Uh-huh. We need to give her a half a hour spin-off. segment. <laughs> Conspiracy corner. Here she comes Sammy in front of the camera. <laughs> all right. Well, this week... A high-profile Chinese democracy campaigner who used to be an insider for the Chinese Communist Party is claiming that COVID-19 was intentionally released during the World Military Games in Wuhan in October 2019. And, coincidentally, (laughs) at that same time is when the Gates Foundation and the World Economic Forum held Event 201 which was an exercise in where the public and private sectors should partner during a severe pandemic for a novel coronavirus. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. What an interesting set of coincidences. The plot thickens, eh? (laughs) 
And then scientists now at the University of California, Riverside, are working on a way to grow edible plants that have the same medication as mRNA vaccines. So if you don't want to get vaccinated, you can just eat a salad. That's why Bill Gates owns all the farmland. Yeah, that sounds like it. Go. It all comes back to Bill Gates. I'm going to be the next one whacked by Bill Gates. <laughs> He just needs to blow up your microchip and you'll just like die of a brain aneurysm. Like in there that freaking Mission Impossible. Oh, or she's like. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Tom Cruise. All the Mission Impossibles <laughs> and you get Tropic Thunder. The fuck stick. I'm incredibly busy. So why don't you get the hell out of here before I snap your dick off and jam it into your ass. It's turned into movies. a Tom Cruise like <laughs> fan we club. We stand Tom Cruise. <laughs> We stand Tom Cruise on this show. Curly hair. Review Tom Cruise movies. <laughs> <laughs> dumpster diving. What's next in the dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Johnny Depp claims no one is safe in cancel culture. Johnny Depp is once again suffering from being a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> cancel culture is his pet name for Amber Heard. Oh. Hey. No one is safe from Amber Heard. <laughs> and then we have PETA releases a video on how to keep things hot in the bedroom while fingering fruits. This was disgusting. This was weird and creepy. Ugh. I mean, PETA just puts whatever out and then under it they had videos of people having sex, which was like some guy was like jerking it to the new PETA ad. <laughs> Because there was a whole ad of two people having sex and one couple lasted longer and then the human ended up dying when he got crushed by an air conditioner. Right, because he was a that meat was eater. The, the meat eater. And the other couple is yeah. vegan and yeah. they could last longer. Yeah, and they longer. could last longer. <sighs> no one wants to last that long, by the way. <laughs> and they were going with all this fruit and it was very disgusting but it was weird just coming from PETA I was like I'm starting to worry about what they're actually doing with those animals over at PETA because this is gross yeah by the way you definitely shouldn't be finger banging a hot pepper and then touching your hoo-ha uh. not unless you want to learn a lesson the hard way <laughs> I liked what Sam said, where it was, <laughs> where she was like, "Imagine being like, Mom, I got a job. I'm a hand model." <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, that's so great. Send what me the link, doing? honey. Oh my god. Uh, and you're like, here you go, and it's just you finger banging fruit and molesting it. So gross. And then we have gorillas shock onlookers with oral sex at the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> this is hilarious. It was funny because of the reaction from like all the parents <laughs> and their kids around, like shielding their eyes, and the guy in the background is like, oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God. The gorillas need some freaking tips from the pe PETA ad. Uh -huh. I think. Uh -huh. I just picture them like getting ready to go outside and be in front of the humans. They're like, what can we do today that'll <laughs> really freak them out? <laughs> yeah. Let's freak them out today. How about blatant oral sex? <laughs> <laughs> and the dad was like, oh, oh okay, that was quick. And they were just like done. <laughs> it was just funny. Then we have Breaking Bridget. The ACLU is challenging states like Texas and Arkansas in court to fight for abortion access, but in quoting Ruth Bader Ginsburg on abortion, the ACLU removed all words relating to women. Women! Women! It was definitely a women week. There were so many instances of this, this being one of the most egregious. Even a dead woman can't fight for women's rights anymore. It's just crazy to me. Nothing honors a woman whose life mission was to fight for women by completely erasing the word women from all of her quotes. Ugh. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Carol Markowitz in an article for the New York Post said something that I really liked about how it's never the men that are getting erased. Mm -hmm. It's and generalized. It's always the women who are getting kind of just like taken down to their body parts. Yeah. One of the other things in this category, the Lancet's newest issue focuses on period shame and bodies with vaginas. Bodies with vaginas is the language of serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so crazy to me because men get to be men, trans men are men, trans women are women, which is why I still don't understand why we can't use the word women and women become bodies with vaginas. 
What is going on? The, women are, when people are like, they're not actually being erased. I'm like, they're literally being fucking erased. This is evidence of it. They are erasing women and women need to push back and be like, this is, we're not standing for this. Right. And, and, and to make other people comfortable. And how about being referred to as a body with vagina makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that billions of women have experiences of motherhood, menopause, all of the things that come along with being a female. You can't talk about those things because they make a very small percentage of people uncomfortable. I don't understand, too, if if trans women are women, why can't you use the word women? Yeah. Uh. Women! Women! I just, I want to yell it all day long while I'm online. I, it makes me so mad. It really, like, breaks my brain and hurts hurts my soul. Being reduced to your body parts, your, like, reproductive organs. It's a dehumanizing. Mm-hmm. It's dehumanizing in the way that serial killers dehumanize their victims. And misogynist. Uh-huh. It's just so, this is how, <sighs> I just don't know if I have the strength to go on. Take me to the glue factory. <laughs> Episode 70 is our last episode. <laughs> this will be our last episode of Dumpster Fire. We like even numbers. The end. Please We've gone to the glue to factory. We just have to find the Tom Cruise. to the glue factory. <laughs> you know how they have like those gone, gone fishing, fishing sessions? Sessions. Gone to the glue factory. We really if anyone us. out there wants to get Dumpster Fire a present, you can get us some sign from Etsy that says gone to the glue factory. <laughs> <laughs> We'll put it next to Karen. <laughs> we'll make sure it appears on the set. And now the internet is glorious to cleanse your palate from this dreadful experience. The mama party girl, she just want to fun too. They say you ain't want to Welcome to my basic white sister's home. Our mist. Let's stay home. Crazy happy. Welcome to the theme second dance tutorial. The only dance tutorial for people who want to learn how to dance but don't have a lot of time. We're going to start with this. Then we're going to roll it into that. Fantasy news on Watkins Welcome. We welcomed Jillian Hamilton. We talked about cheating and all kinds of interesting taboo subjects. Was really fascinating, generated a lot of discussion. We're starting a mailbag segment for Walk-Ins Welcome. So if you have questions for anything and anything regarding our podcast, please email us at walkinswelcomequestions at gmail.com. And we're on Rumble. So if you want to get all of this stuff, guys, on Rumble, you know what? I have boobs. I am a body with breasts. I know. It's (laughs) shocking. We hear it a lot. It's really boring. So think of something interesting to talk about. Tell Maggie what your favorite color is. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even something more interesting than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a comment other than how Bridget has boobs or how Bridget Amazing. should stop showing her boobs oh because my God. she won't be she'll never be taken seriously or whatever. Like how long have about- I been hearing this? Uh-huh. Like a who thinks I want to be f***ing taken seriously? <laughs> have you seen my set? I have a f***ing sex doll behind me. We know the flag is backwards. <laughs> That's why it says we know. <laughs> <laughs> but we're there early. Two hours early. You can get everything early and rumble. My Spectator article where some porn came out this week. Check that out. Subscribe to Spectator, the magazine. Dumpster Fire is now a podcast and new episodes will drop on Tuesdays. You can join the community at fetacy.com. We mentioned that at the top of the episode. Everything you don't get to see, we put back there. The unedited version drops on Sundays for your viewing pleasure. And we also have workouts and Zooms and live streams and all kinds of stuff. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. And shop our merch at bridgeoffetacy.com. We have tons of stuff. We have new stuff coming. The holidays are here. Get somebody something from your favorite, not a news show. <laughs> we need to get that merch made. Not we are a not, a, not a news show. Yes. Uh, thank you to Dave Yates, Matt Monroe, Andy Chandler, and Better Fetacy for all of the writing, research, and editing skills. 
Thank you to Cousin Maggie. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you to Sammy Flaps and Folds. Thank you, Bridget. I can't do this without either one of you. <laughs> and thank you, Zen Pro Audio, for the mic. Check out Zen Pro Audio for all of your audio needs. Thank you, subscribers, commenters, and viewers. We're here to entertain you while the world burns and also make burgers out of your sacred cows. Don't forget that. We're just trying to laugh at all this shit, guys, because it's crazy. Thank you, Sheath and Squidprint, our sponsors this week. Links are in the description below. Like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. And that's it for this week, folks. We'll be back next week. If we don't go to the glue factory. <laughs> With my boobies. She's got boobs. This has been your dumpster fire for the week of September 19th to September 25th. I'm Bridget Fettesee. Now make me right.